We are the history and we are the future. I think if it's one thing that I ask of all of you, it is to learn, to keep learning, to learn and learn to keep your ears and your hearts and your minds open, to read and watch and to listen and to listen deeply, deeply to stay open to the possibility of continually growing and changing, to understand that what brings you to this conference and to drug policy reform in the first place, that what brought you is just a part of something so much greater and so much larger. That for most of you coming from America, hearing what is happening around the rest of the world, both that is inspiring as well as that is in terrifying, that is our struggle as well. That for those of you who come here because of the issues and the problems of mass incarceration we deal with, understanding the incarceration that operates around the world, understanding all the other harms of the drug war, understanding the rights of people to use drugs without being persecuted for doing so, not to be demonized, not to be left for dead, to be given a helping hand. That's our mutual obligation to keep learning and then, as you learn, to teach what you learn, to teach what you learn. You know, I am overwhelmingly committed to the notion that, that this is not a place where we preach to the converted, but where a small group of people come together so that we can become empowered to become ever more powerful agents out in the world. That we come here with the ability to go out and teach people who have never thought or cared about this stuff, of people who operate from ignorance and fear. That obligation to learn deeply and then to teach what we know, not to be an echo, echo chamber in this little hotel room, but to go and to Go, when we go into the south, into the, the south with the highest incarceration rates in the world two years from now, we will be more successful and more welcome to the extent by which we teach what we have learned. We cannot suffice about just talking to one another. Every one of you know that. We have to be willing to talk to those people we don't like, who don't look like us, who don't sound like us, and who don't vote like us. But that is how we're going to move to the next level. You know, these are... Ch These are, as always, and they will, as they will probably always be, challenging times. You know, we look at what happened in Paris just a few days ago, and we can see the ways in which evil and terror lurk in this world, and in which we will never, ever be free of that. It's how we manage it. We look at the people in our government and elsewhere and the people running office who want to respond to that sort of terror and evil in all the wrong ways by expelling and punishing those people who are fleeing that very terror. And that's not right. We see, people, we see people doing with their fears today and politicians taking advantage of those fears today just what politicians and others did with the fears around drugs in the, in the past. And that's why our struggle is not just about ending the war on drugs in America, not just about ending the war on drugs around the world. It is about taking the values of science, compassion, health and human rights, of fighting against racism and classism and subjugation, against ignorance and fear, and taking those values values to advance more closely to a civilized way of dealing with drugs and to a more civilized world altogether. In that respect, I am going to keep fighting as long as I can. Drug Policy Alliance is going to keep fighting. The organizations who join us here are going to keep fighting. I am counting on all of you to keep fighting. We are not going to stop. We're going to get bigger. We're going to get stronger. We are going to not let our internal conflicts ever tear us apart because we have a commitment as a movement to freedom and justice. Thank Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.